What's up, DC Nation? Welcome back to the video. And guys, like the video, give a big thumbs up and YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe because I always great GC Cons content every day that you don't want to miss. Now, guys, today I'm reviewing Robin 8 page special, 8th anniversary 100 page special. Yeah, guys, 100 pages of comic, 10 stories written by writers who have pretty much written the character in many years. Like, these, some of these writers haven't written uh, Robin, like Dick Grayson. There's four different Robins. Well, Technically five. There's Stephanie Brown, there's Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, Jason Todd, and Damian Wayne. And there may be other ones, but they're not as popular, like they have like just brief appearances. But these are like the main five. And I honestly think like Stephanie, she's kind of not as big as the other four, but she's included in this book. But still, they all get stories in here, and some of them are bad, so they're in the middle of the road, and some of them are actually pretty amazing. But what I decided to do is review them individually, so I'll review each story, give them a score, and by the end of the video, you'll see my overall score. So guys, enough with, with this intro, let's get to story number one. So guys, this story is titled A Little Nudge and stars from with Dick Grayson, the original Robin, the OG, and we have Batman in it. And all it shows is Batman and Robin teaming up by our criminals, saving kids, saving different people. But pretty much Dick is now turning 18. He's he's pretty much like a grown man in a way now. He's not a kid anymore. He's trying to get his independence, and he's going against Batman with some rules. And Batman's like, hey, you have to listen to me. But then Dick eventually expi uh, explains to him, he's like, hey, I thank you for taking me in, pretty much for protecting me, building me into the man I am today. And, but it's now that I go my own path and build pretty much my own life. And Bruce is like, okay, I get that. Just stay safe and always go by, you don't have to go by my rules, but at least stay out on a good path. Now, Dick does do this in the final panel, you see him pretty much walk, well he's on like a motorcycle I think, he's like driving away, but you see like a Nightwing picture in the background, you see different like his feature in the background, it looks pretty cool, I like that. And the writing was actually pretty solid, like the dialogue, the tracks between Bruce and Dick, like it's really well done. Like the beginning I was like, okay, Batman's being a little harsh, but by the end when they actually, he's like, he gets it, I'm like, alright, that's cool. Now, the only problem with the story is it is a little simple, like there's not a lot, like yeah, it's Dick's 18th birthday, he wants independence, and he's turned on Nightwing, yeah, we get that, with context, we know the context, but in terms of the story itself, it, there's not as much there, like yeah, they save a kid, and the kid has like a Batman shirt on, and um, Dick saves him, and the kid says, hey, I actually want to be like you, like that's a nice scene. But there could be more like development, a little more depth in the story, and it would make it like more great. But that still doesn't prevent it from being a pretty solid story and more like the middle of the road stories in this book. But I'm overall gonna give it an eight out of ten, solid. I recommend it. Check it out. The first story in this book, and it's a good starter. Now guys, the second story in this book, number two, is how Aftershock. Now this is written by uh, Chuck Dixon. The last one was written by Marv Rolfman, and he did go with that, with the whole um, the Dick Grayson Batman one. But with this story, we have Nightwing. It's just full on Nightwing. And all he's doing in this story is saving different people as like a bridge falls. And he saves this, um, these two women, and this girl goes into birth, and at the end she's like, hey, I want to name it after you. And Nightwing's like, no, you just name it Robin. And I'm like, okay, like the art's not as bad, like the art looks pretty cool and there's some like cool artistic uh, features to it that actually convey the story very well, but in terms of story, there's not much here, like all he is is saving different people, and then it's like, oh, a nice ending, in a way, like I, I didn't really get convinced by it, I wasn't like, oh, that's super nice, no, it's like, oh, whatever, but still, it's not a bad story, mainly because like the art, and it's, there's still some action because he's jumping, he's using the try to use like science, even though he doesn't know it as well as other characters in the DC universe. And she shows Nightwing still a hero, still not up to the level of the other stories in this book, and it's one of the weakest. So that's why I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. It's okay. I don't really recommend it, but you can still check it out and read it once and see if you get something out of it. Mostly the art. So guys, the third story, which I think is one of the worst in this book, is titled Team Building. And guys, you see the Titans, this is the only story in the book with the Titans, and you see them going against Damien Dark and his goons. Now, there's not much of that fight in this story, 
it's more that like the goons are bad Damien Dark and they lost, right? And they pretty much went against Damien Dark's plans. Like they said, um, Damien Dark could tell, hey, use this to be off Don Troy, use this to beat off Aqualad, use this to be off Flash, use this to be off Nightwing. He has different plans that will work, but these goons, they didn't listen at all. And they don't they don't operate well as a team like the Titans do. And then eventually gets revealed that actually Dick is there, he's in disguise, and he takes away what Damien Dark has left and beats them. So that's about it. Like I like Dick being disguised, but in terms of like the story, Damien Dark, he's good on Arrow, but in terms of the story, nah. Like nah. He's not a good he's not a good villain in the comics as much as on the TV show. And the goons are just like acting dumb. Like one of the characters I knew it was revealed as like Dick later on. So I liked him, but the other goons is like, okay, whatever. And like the fight scene um, between the Titans and like the um, goons that goes back and forth, it's not as great. And the art itself is just kind of dated. It's just not up to the level as like Michael Janet, George Jimenez, like by far. Like it's not. It's way below that. And even like last, um, the last two stories are, which those were up to the level, those were still really good, where the art here is just like simple and not really cool. So this is by far one of the weakest, and I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10, but guys, it's not the weakest, alright? There's one more story that's weaker, and that'll come later in this video. Now guys, the next one is the fourth story, and guys, this is actually a good one, you're probably like, oh, is he gonna trash another story in this book? No, nah, I'm not, yet. But still, this is one with Tom King and Tim Seeley, which I, guys, I like the writers, Tom King can be a little, eh, sometimes, you know I'm talking about killing off Alfred's Batman series, but we're not talking about that here. But with Tim Seeley, I really like him, because... He's done great on Nightwing. Like this is perfect. He did Grayson. Um, he did the Nightwing comic for like 31 issues, and that was like the best. Like I loved his run on that. And after that, I felt like it came downhill. Like Nightwing is on issue number 70 now, and she's been terrible with like Rick, him losing his um, memory. Now with like the Core Vows, and now going to Joker. I just haven't liked it. But when Tim Seeley was on board, it was an awesome series. And guys, Tom King has done good with like just standalone, focused on one character. So this is perfect for him. And when you factor in Tim Seeley and Tom King did a series way back, Grayson, and that was one of my favorite New 52 series. Yeah, it ended a little meh, but it was still an awesome series and showed like the best of these creators. So having them come back with the best artist on that series, Michael Jan, is automatically a win. Like guys, the this pretty much story shows Dick, you see, or Agent 37 with this other girl, Paris, and he's pretty much teaching her as they go on like a mission. Like the, pretty much the rules that Batman taught him, like the lessons he taught him. And those are like, hey, improvise, don't trust people, and go with your instinct, and don't listen to your mentor, be yourself, be Robin. And he's you hear those like in the back of his mind throughout the story. And you see a couple twists and turns, like the one girl they say ends up being like a gorilla, and that the mission itself isn't really relevant, but just how the story stru structures very well. And I like Dick being back in like that Grayson, like being inspired, and like that's just cool, and it gives me like nostalgia vibes on Grayson. And I really wish they'd bring that series back, because that was an awesome series. But the only grip I have with the story is this one part, one part, alright, where Pretty much, he, um, he remembers what about lessons he taught him, and Batman said, hey, use your uh, rage and anger to help, like, push you to beat these people and stuff. And then, pretty much, uh, well, it, it, no, it was like, when things go dark, remember what happened that was really bad, and use that rage to, like, motivate you. I'm like, okay, I get that. But then Dick tells the uh, girl he's teaching, Paris, hey, when things get dark, just remember you're gonna save someone else. I'm like, those don't really connect. Like, throughout the story, um, Batman's lessons and the lesson that Dick is teaching Paris connect very well and goes very well with the story. But in this certain part, this one panel, which I may just be nitpicking, but I just did not like it. I was like, what? It, it made me like, think for a little bit and it was kind of confusing. But after that, the story was great, and that's really the only problem in it. And it is a simple story that there's not like a lot to think, of, think about. But still, it's structured well. Tim Seeley and Tom King write very well. Michael Jan's art is great. And yeah, I'm overall going to give this story a 7.5 out of 10.
Now, guys, the next story is the fifth story in the series. It's pretty much um, the best one. Guys, this is my favorite, all right? It's Jason Todd. It's called More Time. Now, you see Batman in the past with, like, uh, kid Jason Todd, which is pretty nice. And Jason Todd found his, um, pretty much his father's watch, Bruce's father's watch, that was broken. And he fixed it. Pretty much, He almost fixed it. Not all the way. But he gave it to Bruce on his birthday. And Bruce really appreciated that. Now, we fast forward. And we see after Jason's death, after he died from the Joker, which is a big part in Batman's mythology. And you see Batman show up, and he has like the watch in like a um, in like a present. He puts it where Jason Todd died, and then he leaves. And that's when the Jason Todd who died, supposedly died, is now back. And he comes to it, sees it, and he's like, "Huh, happy birthday, Bruce." And him, like, it's actually a cool thing. It's like two panels. You see a younger version and the old version both saying at the same time. And it really hits you, it impacts you, you're like, wow, this is a simple story, but it impacts so much. It's one of like the shortest stories in the book, like there's like some stories that are like 12 pages, some 10 pages, this one's about 8 or 9 pages, it's short, but it impacts well, it's quick, there's not a lot of dialogue, but the story itself is very well written, and it just impacts you so well, it's powerful, I like it, and it's my favorite story in the book. And I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Definitely recommend it. Go check it out, guys. Like, if you have, if you get this book, you get this Robin 100-page special, and you're like, man, I can't read all this in one scene. I have to do other stuff. Like, we all have stuff to do during the day. But you're like, okay, I'll read one story real quick. Read this one. You'll not re regret it, all right? Don't push this one off. Don't, like, read in order. Read this one first and enjoy it, all right? All right, guys, let's get to the next story. Now guys, the sixth story in this book is called uh, Extra Credit. Now you see Tim Drake in this one. There's actually like two Tim Drake stories in this issue, technically. Like the next story, it has all the Robins. Well, like, it's more of a Tim Drake uh, focused story, which Tim Drake is one of my favorite. I put Dick Grayson at the top, and then I put probably Tim Drake, then Damian Wayne, then Jason Todd, and then Stephanie Brown, and then so on and so forth. But guys, Pretty much in this story, you see Tim Drake, he's talking to like the principal, and the principal's like, hey, you have great grades, but if you want to go into law enforcement, you need to have like extracurriculars. You need extra programs to show that you're well-rounded. And as he's talking, it's like, hey, you can try this out. And it shows like different images of Tim actually like doing, being Robin on the sidelines. Like the principal does not know this. So that's what uh, Tim is doing on his free time. And he does all the study, he helps people out. He's a hero, and it shows that at the end, Tim's like, oh, okay. Uh, he goes from being, oh, I can't do none of these extra programs, to, oh, yeah, I'll do all of them. And the principal's like, you sure about that? And then he talks to this other girl, he's like, that's kind of weird. Like, he just went from nine to one, do none of them, to doing all of them. Like, And the girl says, well, Tim's kind of weird at times, but we know this kid has a lot of potential. We know he can go to the sky, he do a lot of stuff. But little do they know, he's Robin. And the final page, you see him pretty much swinging away and going to do his duty with Batman. Now, that's fine. But this is a very simple story, and it's just okay. Like, the art is cool. Like, this, the, the art is uh, drawn by the same guy who did, like, Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja, Mutant Ninja Turtles. Man, Batman Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the story, which is like a crossover. That was an awesome crossover. And the art is amazing. And the art here is amazing, too. But the story itself is very simple, and you'll forget it very quickly. Like, I had to reread it before I uh, did this video, because I kind of forgot about it. Like, it wasn't really a great story. But the art really carries it. So that's why I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. You still check it out, but it's more for the art, not the story. Now, guys, the seventh story in this comic is called Boy Wonders. Now, you see all the Robins here, all right? You see Tim Drake. Well, you don't see Stephanie Brown. But you see Damian Wayne. You see Jason Todd, Dick Grayson. And all it's about is Tim Drake. He's trying to go on a new path. And just like how the first story is all like Dick going on his own path, well, Tim hasn't done that yet. Where Damian Wayne, he has something unique about him. He hasn't got there yet. But Jason Todd has come Red Hood. You see Dick come Nightwing. And Tim Drake's like, what am I going to do? So he actually like fights off different villains with all these Robins and asks for their advice. And by the end of the story, you see pretty much Tim finally put out like the Knights Protocol, which is pretty much the team of Clayface, Batwoman, uh, Stephanie Brown, spoiler, 
uh, Tim, and Batman, and that was pretty much the whole Detecticons run that James Tunyon did. Now, James Tunyon, or Tyon, however you pronounce his name, wrote the story so it makes sense, but if you're a big fan of that Detecticons run that was like a couple years ago, which I am, I love that run, and still like the end. The end was a little disappointing, but it was a great run most of the time, so seeing like technically like a prequel to it is pretty cool, but still, it's not the best story, it's solid, but it could be a little better. Like the art is kinda like, it's good at times, but kinda weird at times too. Like the artist in this story, he was on Justice League and other stories, and I'm not a super big fan of his art, but I know he can do good art sometimes, so I expect it a little more. But still, the story's solid, and the art, even though it has some like not like inconsistencies in the story, is still pretty solid, and I recommend it, and that's why I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. Alright guys, we're back to me telling trash about a story. So, let's talk about the H story, which is by far the worst. Like, this story is terrible. Like, you see Stephanie Brown, and yes, I, I have no grip with Stephanie Brown as Robin. I actually liked her back then, like, uh, pre-New 52, she was good. But in this story, the art's bad. Like, I do not like the art, alright? It looks cartoonish. And it just doesn't really work out at, at all. I don't like it. And then the writing too, it's written like a different font that's like kind of scribbly. And I don't like it at all. And then you see Batman, Stanley Brown's trying to go on her own path, which is kind of similar to the Dick one at the beginning. But that one was written very well, where this one was not written well at all. And you see her like, hey, she's not listening at all. Like, I get, okay, you go against the rules, but you still um, go out with good stuff. Like, in the first story with Dick, you see him go against Batman's rules, but you see him save a kid and do good stuff. Where here, Stephanie Brown just does stupid stuff, goes against Batman's rules, and I'm like, uh, Batman is right there. You weren't. And then by the end, Batman's like, okay, here's your new costume. Just be yourself. But hey, I'm be a little more strict on you. And Stephanie Brown's like, okay, let's do it. And I'm like, all right, that's it. Like, it's a waste of time it's not a good story it's very weird and i wish they gave a better story to stephanie brown because she could be a good robin but here it makes her look terrible like actually like really like they should have did this a lot better and it's the worst story in this uh book it really it kind of docks the book down a little bit because that's how bad it is and that's why i'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 10 don't recommend this story like read this story last or just skip it entirely because you won't like it Now guys, the ninth story in this book is the second best. It's not, it's close to be as good as the Jason Todd one, but still really awesome. It's the Super Sons one, and you see George Jimenez on art. Now his art is amazing. Guys, George Jimenez is one of my favorite artists, right up there with Greg Capallo. And guys, he's really good, like draws it very well. It's a short story. It pretty much has like, um, Superboy, he's writing like an essay, and Lois is like, hey, just speak from your mind, think about something. And he thinks about Damian Wayne. Now, he pretty much writes how they're best friends, then he falls asleep, Damian finds it, he's like, ha, I knew it. And then they embark on a venture. Now, that's the story. Now, you think it's simple, right? But how it's written by Pierre J. Thomas, who was one of my favorite writers, is very well done. It, like, really impacts you. Like, man, I love these characters. Damian Wayne and Superboy's interactions are great, and it gives you, like, those vibes of the Super Sons, um, comic book, The Adventures of Super Sons, and the original one, which that story was awesome, guys. Like, when they started that comic, it was one of the best comics in Rebirth. Like, I loved it. I got every issue, and I was kind of skeptical at first when they, like, previewed it in the Superman comic with, like, Peter J. Thompson there, but they delivered, all right? With George Chemez, a great story, and just the banter between Damien and Superboy and how they're, like, best friends, it's just really good. Like, it just shows it's one of the best stories in this book, mainly because of that. So yeah, guys, I definitely recommend the story. You should check it out. Like, after reading the Jason Todd one, check this one out, all right? Because you're going to love it. You, you'll love the art. It's very well done. And the right itself. And you just love Super Sons, the book, like, the old, like, comic that was, like, I think it was, like, 60 issues. And then they had, like, a sequel that was, like, Adventures of Super Sons that was 12 issues. If you guys love that stuff like I did, then you'll love this story, too. And that's why I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Alright guys, we made it. the final story in this book, and guys, this is another Damian Wayne one. Now this one is solid, it's not the best, the art is pretty cool, I like it, it's, it's different, it's very unique, and I like that, I, 
like when Ari's unique but still very well done. And you see pretty much Batman going after Damian Wayne. It's like, you're hiding something from me. And Damian won't reveal what it is. And the bad side about that, we don't find out about it in the story, which is kind of like stupid. Like, why do that throughout like a 12 page story? It's the longest story in this book. And we don't even get to the climax. It tells you, okay, go read Teen Titans to see, like, the ending. Which I'm like, really? Like, come on. But that's, like, the only flaw in it. Like, the story's cool. You see him fight off a villain. Batman and Damian Wayne work together to fight off a villain. You see, like, the Batmobile come through, like, a wall. Which I thought that was my favorite part in this story. And it's very well-paced. I'll say that. Which is, like, it makes sense. It's the longest story, so it has to be well-paced. But still... I wish they gave like a kind of climax to it. Like we found out about the lie that like Damian Wayne is like hiding from Batman. Like instead of just leaving up like, okay, we read the story but found out nothing. You gave us a question, didn't answer at all. And kind of like an advertisement for the Teen Titans comic, which I don't like when stories do that. But still, solid story, good art, and I like when Batman and Robin team up. And that's why I'm gonna give this story an 8 out of 10. Go check it out. But yeah guys, that's that's it. That's all 10 stories with all different scores. So you see how variety there is. Some are bad, some are middle of the road, some are pretty amazing. But if I get like my top three, I'd probably put number one, Jason Todd's one, the more time. Uh, number two, Super Sons, which is like uh, best friends, title best friends. And then number three, I'd probably put, hmm, probably the Grayson, the one with like the lesson plan where you had Tim Seeley, Tom King, and Michael Jan in that story, and you see like Dick as a spy, that was pretty cool, and overall like the stories were pretty good, the only bad ones were with like the team building one, and the Stephanie Brown one, let's not even mention that, but still, solid um, book, it's pretty good, 100 pages, a lot of content for your read, and if you love Robin, love all these different versions, Tim Drake, Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Daniel Wang, then you'll like this book too. But guys, I'm overall going to give this book a 7.5 out of 10. Like I said, it's very variety. There's some that are bad, some good. So that's why I'm putting it like middle of the road and put it that 7.5 score. But guys, like the video, give a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. So it's great to see content every day that you don't want to miss. And guys, before you close out, in the comment section below, tell me what you thought. What was your favorite story in this book? And what was your least favorite story? And do you think DC should keep doing this? Like they did the Flash one a couple weeks ago with the 750 is like a big special. They had this one out with Robin, then they're having Catwoman soon, and then Joker. Like it's a lot of like big content books. And do you think those are good? Do you like those or do you not? Like is it too much to read? I personally like them, but I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. But guys, um, that's pretty much the video. And peace out.